whatever we do in Lagos, we also need to ensure that we replicate in other ports. Currently, I don't know, somehow, psychologically, every Nigerian thinks, most Nigerians in Porters actually think there are only two ports of Tinkan and Apapa. And we felt there was need for us to do something about the ports in the East. Uh, what did we do? So the first thing we did was to tackle the issue of insecurity. At those port locations, after four o'clock, the vessels cannot come to port, they cannot also leave and sail out of port because of insecurity. This is because the ports, the channel is very long. Most of the channels from the fairway boy to the port is over 100 kilometers. So imagine going or sailing 100 kilometers in a channel that is meandering with our safety and security. And of course, with our security, there have been a lot of piracy uh, incidences along that. So what we did was uh, we worked with the Nigerian Navy. And I want to use this opportunity to thank the CNS for the support it has given the Nigerian Post Authority in terms of increase in patrol, the support it has given us in terms of advice working with our security department, and it has done that, does that across the ports, especially in the, in the eastern ports. We have also, uh, working with the Nigerian Post Authority and NEMASA, I mean, sorry, working with NEMASA, the Federal Ministry of Transportation has requested that NEMASA should deploy the deep blue sea uh, assets to the eastern ports, and I think that has been done, and they will be operational shortly, probably the, uh, in the next uh, few weeks. But of course, we worked with the Nigerian police also to create marine police at, this port, at these locations. There were no marine police in Calabar, I think, and Delta until recently when we requested that we need to have marine police who will be in boats patrolling the waterways, especially the ones in the, within the vicinity of the ports. And therefore, we bought more security patrol boats and gave it to the marine police for them to be able to patrol uh, the vicinity of the port to reduce incidences of uh, piracy and hijacking of our vessels. Uh, these are some of the uh, vessels that uh, marine crafts we bought. We bought more pilot cutters because they were not existent in the, they didn't exist. Or we had very few of them in the eastern port. We also bought more tugboats to ensure that we offer services that will endear the shipping lines to the eastern ports. We also gave a tariff in terms of a, a, a rebate. We gave tariff rebate to shipping lines to encourage them to bring in uh, or do business in the eastern ports. But of course, we know there are complaints that it's not enough, we need to do more. We are working on coming up with a tariff relief that will trickle down to the importer or to the exporter. If we give the shipping lines tariff relief that does not trickle down to those that are bringing or taking out cargo, then we have actually done nothing. They will smile to the banks while Nigerians are doing businesses at those port locations. We'll see no reason to actually move their cargo from those eastern ports. Um, also, uh, we ensured, like I had mentioned, the certification of the ports of, uh, uh, in the east. So the ports of Tinkan and the ports of um, Calabar and One are now ISO certified and will ensure the other port locations are also certified. And because of this, we have seen a tremendous increase in cargo traffic in One. Year to year, in terms of percentage, One is the fastest growing port in terms of business and activity in Nigeria currently, and we are happy to see that. We're happy to see that a port outside of Lagos is becoming active. And it's not just active in terms of importation, it is also active in terms of exports. And we will keep doing whatever it takes to deploy the adequate uh, machinery, equipment, and staff uh, into those locations. One of the major issues along the channels in the east was also the issue of navigational aids. Navigational aids are buoys that you put along the water to help pilots know how to navigate. One of the, one of the channels is about 110 kilometers long. The one in Lagos is barely 20 something kilometers. So you can see the difference. However, all the buoys we deploy at those locations are either stolen or filfered and turned into scraps. Of course, we have worked with the uh, community leaders in uh, Wari, in Calabar, and other locations to plead that they speak with the community to stop, uh, you know, um, uh, stealing and um, uh, whatever uh, this uh, navigational is. They are quite uh, expensive. So what we did in the last uh, one year was to deploy a new set of buoys along the channel. 
and shipping lines have been writing to uh, actually indicate that that is one of the things that will make them come to the eastern port. So the buoys have been deployed at, uh, uh, the, in the channel leading to Wari port and also in Calabar. And uh, we are working to ensure that we maintain them and they remain there. Of course, some of them, nature takes some of them away. They go adrift. But those that go adrift, if they, are, go, if they go adrift, you'll be able to monitor and find them because they have transponders that can make them easy for you to identify where they are. So, but some of them mostly are stolen and turned to scraps, and that has affected uh, navigation in those channels, and it had made it difficult for vessels to operate in those locations. We also deployed fenders at both the eastern ports and other port locations. These are deployments that will endear the shipping lines. This will provide safety uh, when they are berthing at those locations. To support the federal government's uh, initiative in terms of expansion of the economy and the diversification uh, to, uh, to, for, to export of uh, agricultural commodities and other non-oil exports, whether mined minerals or so, uh, Nigerian Post Authority, working with Nigerian Export Promotion Council, actually licensed 10 export processing terminals. The essence of these export processing terminals, <coughs> excuse me, is to have a location where an exporter can take his good, he can sort them, he can uh, brand them, he can package them, they can test them, they can label them, and so on and so forth. And from that location, you put them in a container, you seal the container, and it goes straight into the port and it is loaded on the vessel. Unlike the practice where currently the shipper, or sorry, the exporter takes his cargo, he's hanging around the port corridor, waiting when to be called on, and we've been losing a lot of cargo, uh, especially perishable cargo. And that has actually reduced the amount of exports from Nigeria. So we worked with Nigerian Export Promotion Council in such a way that uh, this will be made easier. And this is the video of some of the export processing terminals. One of them is a Celebra export processing terminal, which is in Ekorodu. There's another one in One, and there are a couple of others all over the country. This is palm kernel shelling and stuffing operations at an export processing terminal in One. The other video was a Celebra in Lagos. And these are some of the pictures of the export processing terminals. And this one is in One. So you find that these export processing terminals are supposed to be linked to Nigerian Export Promotion Council's uh, domestic export warehouses. It means that with time, even small exporters can actually determine on themselves, by themselves, to actually go and start processing their exports as long as they've been able to work with Nigerian Export Promo uh, Processing uh, Council to find off-takers abroad. And we have seen a gradual increase in exports. We have received feedback, uh, and I think it's a laudable effort. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is my presentation. I want to use this opportunity to thank you for the invitation. Thank you so much.